lobe next to the gallbladder is the quadrate lobe. And now additionally, yes? So you said that's the posterior? Thing? Up here would be the posterior, where we have the caudates right here. Okay, so that's the caudate lobe. Now, we look at this view again. Notice that we have the gallbladder on one side of the quadrate lobe, and on the other side we have this remnant of the umbilical vein from the fetus. You guys remember what that was called? Ligamentum teres. Exactly right. So again, it needs to be on this view, but we're going to see the this structure is the ligamentum teres, the collapsed umbilical vein. Okay, and it's going to this central area of the liver where we have the hepatic artery and portal vein. So we're going to have a small hepatic artery and a larger portal vein and our common bile duct. So I'm not going to label them because you don't need to know them from that relationship. But that same triad that I showed you on that picture over there. Now, this is the ligamentum teres. Associated with the caudate lobe, we have the remnant of the ductus venosus. You can see it emptying where it would have emptied into the inferior vena cava. So up here, we would have ligamentum venosum. Okay, so ligamentum venosum right here, opposite the inferior vena cava from the caudate lobe. So on this, we don't have this particular liver, but inferior vena cava, caudate lobe, ligamentum venosum, quadrate lobe with the gallbladder, ligamentum teres. Okay. Now the ligamentum teres comes to the liver from the umbilical cord. All right, so the ligamentum teres is going to start at that level. So if we look at the, at the here would be the anterior abdominal wall. So this would be the anterior abdominal wall. And it's going to have parietal peritoneum on its inferior surface. And then that's going to form a short mesentery. And then within that short mesentery is going to be the collapsed umbilical vein. So that short mesentery is the falciform <coughs> ligament. Right. So that's going to travel from the umbilicus here up to the liver. Right? So fortunately, unfortunately, this paper towel isn't sticky enough. It's thick. So this would be the parietal peritoneum on the deep surface of the anterior abdominal wall. And starting at this level, it's going to have this hole. that's going to extend down towards the abdominal cavity. And on the edge of that fold will be the umbilical vein that after birth becomes the ligamentum teres. Okay, that moves up towards the liver. And then the falciform ligament can be found uh, between the two lobes of the ligamentum teres. So on this previous picture, 
here's part of the falciform ligament with the round ligamentum teres in its inferior border. And this is where it was cut to separate it from the anterior abdominal wall and the overhanging diaphragm muscle structure. Okay? But it would continue down to the umbilical sinus. And on the diagram here, you can see it as this structure here. Okay? That would be falciform ligament with the ligament teres here going up under the liver. And that this would continue on down towards the um, umbilicus. So if we look at now the, the blood flow into the liver and the arrangement of the liver lobules, these are microscopic arrangements of liver cells. So thousands, millions of these clusters of lobules are the arrangement of the blood flow in the liver. Now, before we talk about that diagram, let's look at the purpose of this. Portal is used for, and there's a reason for using the term portal. Remember our portal system for the hypotheseal hypothalamus? And we had a portal system for the kidneys, all right? Back to a portal system here. So from the small to the small intestine, we would have the superior mesenteric artery going to the small intestine. Within the villi of the small intestine, our channels off of the superior mesenteric artery are going to form our vascular bed of capillaries. All right. So that's going to be our cat bed one. <laughs> and that's going to be within the villi. And what's it going to be doing? What's it going to be absorbing? What products of digestion are going to go into this first bed of capillaries? From the proteins, amino acids. From the carbohydrates, simple sugars, the monosaccharides, but not lipids. Okay, what do lipids go into? Lacteals. Good. All right. So the cat fed ones then come together and form venules and veins, and finally the superior mesenteric vein. Which, if we were not in a portal system, would go into the inferior vena cava and back to the heart. All right, and we pick up the lipids that were in the lacteal. But because this is a portal system, shorten the time, not have to go to the heart and back again. Superior mesenteric vein is going to carry all of this content to the portal vein. Remember, it forms the portal vein along with the splenic vein. Uh, the portal vein goes into the liver. Within the liver, portal vein branches. Join with branches of the hepatic artery, carrying lipids. And both of those flow into our second capillary bed, which are the sinusoids of the liver. Sinusoids are large capillaries, so just a simple squamous epithelia, easy movement across the wall. And this is cap bed two. Capillary bed number two, the sinusoids. All right. What's combining the cat bed one? A catech artery. Oh, cat bed one is just all the capillary beds come together to form the superior mesenteric base. All right. So now, before we finish that off, let's look at 
our picture here. So here's the portal vein, sending branches up the corner of each of these microscopic lobules. And here's the branch of the hepatic artery. Those two vessels join together and form these wide capillaries, which are the sinusoids. Our capillary, second capillary bed, flows by epithelial cells of the liver known as hepatocytes. And now those hepatocytes have first dibs at taking up amino acids. Remember, the liver is the largest gland inside the body. It synthesizes albumin, our osmotic protein. It synthesizes many of our clotting factors, such as fibrinogen, prothrombin. It synthesizes transport proteins, like transferrin, to move iron around. Okay. Um, it takes fats and synthesizes cholesterol. It stores fat-soluble vitamins. It takes the sugars and stores extra sugars, simple sugars from your uh, meal as starch, unless you tell you it's been four or five hours and then it starts to release those back into the blood. So it's taking all this material out of the blood and then adding back to it the proteins that it's made. All right? The, if it's a post uh, prandial after a meal, it'll start releasing the glucose back into the blood, so you'll have a source for energy. So that's why we get that second capillary bed so close. We have that quick and easy access to the food without having to go to the heart and then back again. Because we have the hepatic artery joining that, we also get the lipids. All right. So now once it's done with that, all of these sinusoids combine together and I'll move over here so you guys are in the back can see the sinusoids then flow into the central veins. And now the central veins form the hepatic veins. And we're back to what more comfortable ground that you're familiar with. And those empty into the inferior vena cava. Okay. So this is the sequence of blood flow then for this portal system. Arterial blood forming the, uh, flowing into the capillaries, and in the capillaries of the small intestine, picking up the nutrients. And rather than carrying the nutrients to the heart and then having it dispersed out to all the organs, all of those nutrients go to the liver first. Just like all the nutrients from the placenta and the fetus go to the liver first, okay? So that first cap bed, one absorbs those. Portal vein to the liver portal vein and the hepatic artery break down to form the second capillary bed, which are the sinusoids. And when we're done with the cells, blood flows into the central vein, out of the liver via the hepatic vein, into the inferior vena cava. Okay. So that's the blood flow. That's the reason for a portal system. And we see the portal triad again. So a hepatic lobule, it's like taking a stack of bicycle wheels with the spokes. The hub, if it was hollow, would be our central vein. And we have these rows of hepatocytes, no more than two cells wide. So come up here, Stephanie. We'll get to see my hepatocyte. So I'm a hepatocyte, and Stephanie's a hepatocyte. And our backs are against each other. So we're two cells, and each of us is facing a sinusoid. So each of us has access to our own blood supply. No, not even a cell away. Now, see my hand coming out the hollow between our, our backs? That's where the bile is secreted into. So the bile salts that the liver is adding to the small intestine go out the base of the hepatocyte. Thank you. And at the base, the two cells aren't completely attached, but there's a gap. Take 100 of those cells and 100 of those gaps, and you've got a little channel, okay? And that's the channel for the bile. So we have the flow of two things to consider. Blood flows through the sinusoids to the central vein, and the bile flows in the opposite direction out to the bile ducts. So at the corner of each of these lobules, and those corners are shared by other lobules, we have this structure known as the portal triad. We have six of those portal triads of each lobule. So let's go back to this diagram, which is a little more difficult to understand. So here is one liver lobule. This is from a pig, which has a lot of connective tissue. In a human, it's not as easy to find. 
the corners, this is where the portal triads would be. All right, shared by other portal triads, here's the central vein. So the blood flow is all in this direction from those combined vessels, <laughs> and then the bile is in the opposite direction. Yes? Where does the bile come from? Do the bile is made by the hepatocytes. Oh, okay. So the bile salts are released from those hepatocytes. All right, so this doesn't show the bile canaliculi, but it does show the bile ducts. So does the... Is the bile pretty much like recycled or something? It does contain bilirubin, which is the pigment for red blood cells. Okay, but the bile salts are, um, are from the hepatocytes themselves. Now, but you talked about the recycled. Within the sinusoids, we have unique macrophages known as Kupfer cells. All right, Kupfer cells, K-U-P-F-F-E-R, one of the rare instances where we keep somebody's name. Remember, our macrophages are monocytes that have been activated as a uh, phagocytic cell, and we find them in loose irregular connective tissue primarily. We found them in the uh, alveolus as an alveolar macrophage. An unusual situation, it was protected from the drying air by the surfactant. But when we find it in the blood, I mean, that's not a normal place. Blood is sterile. So we don't usually find active macrophages in the blood. In the liver, it's functioning to break down the red blood cells, the ones that are older than, you know, almost four months old or older. The membrane's becoming um, unstable. So the macrophages will break them down. The hepatocytes will take up the bilirubin that's been released from the old red blood cells and secrete it into the bile along with the bile salts, and we'll talk about the function of the bile salts um, with lipids on Thursday. So here's our model that we have of the liver histology. I'll probably take a picture of it because this thing weighs about 25 pounds. When I first used it yesterday at Saxon, I said it weighed 10. It seems to get heavier and heavier. So let's use it up here. So this is looking, this image, well, if we go back to this picture, all right, it's like taking one of this area right here. So it's not the entire width of the lobule, but just half of it. So if we look at that image, over here would be the portal triad, over here is the central vein. So the wider blue structure here is the branch of the portal vein, and for lab, just portal vein is fine. You don't have to put branch. Here would be the branch of the hepatic artery, and the two come together, and the blood flows into these vessels here, which represent the sinusoids. So the blood is flowing past the hepatocytes, these brown epithelial cells, towards the central vein. This yellow structure represents the lymphatic, which gets ignored. That would make it a portal clod, and nobody apparently wants to talk about a clod. So we ignore that and call it a portal triad. These green lines right here, see the cut and cross section, represent that gap from the base. These are the bile canaliculi. Bile flows in this direction, away from the central vein into the bile duct. Okay. There are no Cooper cells on this model. So that would have to be a histology slide if I were to ask you on next week. Not this week, we won't have histology on Thursday. So just another viewing of the cross section. So here would be the corner with the portal triad, sinusoids flowing in this direction into the central vein, and then from there heading to the hepatic vein. So the space that you've illustrated with your hand behind your back would be known as the bile kind of like Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to and I'll show it to you in an in a electromicrograph as well. All right, so just some other pictures, continuing pictures. Um, so now let's look at some histology of the liver. So this is a low power view in the human, and you can see it's not as easily picked out. You can't see the connective tissue connecting these two areas of portal triads. 
but around each one, there's more connective tissue, and you have several vessels. See how the sinusoids kind of radiate in here? And that's our central vein, okay? So that's a low power. Your liver is pretty easy to identify as just an organ. It's kind of pretty. And you can put the, that up as a wallpaper in your dining room. Yeah. I still like that other one for the bathroom. All right, so here's the portal triad. Notice the amount of connective tissue okay, around it. The larger vessel is the portal vein. Lar thinner wall for the diameter of the vessel. Here's the wall for this one, a little bit more muscle, so the hepatic artery. And bile ducts are simple cuboidal. Our blood vessels are simple squamous lines. This is simple cuboidal, so it looks darker with those rounder nuclei closer together. So that's a close-up of a portal triad. Here's a close-up of the liver cells with the sinusoids, and they are lined by simple squamous epithelium. There's a little bit of a gap between the epithelium and the cell, and we'll look at that on, on EM. And here's some Cooper cells, all right, the macrophages that are found in the sinusoids. Here's the central vein. Not much muscle, it's a vein. So a simple squamous lining, and then you can see the sinusoids draining into it. Okay. So you would expect less glucose, less amino acids in the blood of the central vein than say the portal vein, as you've had that, some of that product taken out. Now the next slide is an electromicrograph of two um, hepatocytes. Here's a sinusoid. Here's another one. And what types of organelles would you expect to be common in a liver? There's a lot of protein synthesis. So what are the two organelles we see with protein synthesis? Ribosome, uh, uh, ER, and Golgi. All right. Why would you also see a lot of smooth ER? What does the liver do that requires smooth ER? It does not synthesize steroids. It synthesizes proteins, hence the ribosomal ER and the Golgi. Why would it need smooth ER? What's a major function of the, of the liver? Hint, Tylenol and alcohol. Detoxification. And it uses smooth ER for that. So it's unique. It has both the smooth ER and the ribosomal ER, or rough ER. All right? Now, if we look at the sinusoidal surface, a little bit higher bag, here's the sinusoid, here's the hepatocyte, and there's a little bit of a gap. The hepatocyte doesn't demonstrate microvilli, but it does have microfolds. So here would be the simple squamous of the sinusoid. Here would be a hepatocyte with these microfolds, sometimes known as micro rugae, out there to pick up. And this space in between is known as the space of this day. So this would be the writing here, okay? As it crosses out of the sinusoid towards the liver. So this would be our hepatocyte with its nucleus. The second hepatocyte would be here. And here would be the bile canaliculus. Right. No, it's not lined by any additional epithelium. Its wall is formed by the plasma membrane of the hepatocyte. It's not held together by junctions. So if we go back to low power, See it right here, All right, and then in high power, you can see it here. So here are desmosomes holding the 
vagal membrane of the two hepatocytes together, except at this point, and they actually have some folds here as well. So that would be a cross section through a biocanalation. And that's where we stop today. Okay. Don't be so happy. It's a lot of info. It is. I don't know. Well, it is epithelial, so um, they have a higher rate of um, But we have other epithelial cell organs such as
It's going to be awkward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, for my other very high. Yeah. 